we'll start. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, my name's Simon Pirani. Uh, I'm a historian uh, of uh, Russia after the revolution uh, and other things, and I'm part of the organising group uh, that's organised these talks. Um, I'll just say briefly uh, a little about the series, because I can see there are people uh, who've not been with us before, and you're very welcome. Um, the series is being held this year and next year to mark 50 years since 1968-69, uh, and we've called it the Social Histories of Revolution, the long 1960s, uh, in order to embrace not only the events of, of those uh, years, the 1968 general strike in France and so on, but to take a wider view at the whole series of revolutionary events that swept the world starting in the 1960s, so not only the social movements that swept the United States and Europe in those years, but also change in the Middle East, Latin America and other parts of the Global South, up to and including uh, the Iranian Revolution uh, in 1979, and also looking at uh, contemporary uh, movements taking place at the same time in the so-called uh, socialist countries. Now, this series follows on from another series uh, of talks that we held uh, mostly in uh, 2017, um, started in 2016, uh, on the centenary of uh, the Russian Revolution. And those talks were about the social histories of 1917. In other words, uh, the way that not so much that the parties and political forces uh, were involved in uh, the 1917 revolution or, or the events in the 1960s, although uh, we will obviously uh, be touching on those, but the focus really is about the participation of uh, millions of people in these events uh, who come onto the scene at times of revolution in a way that they don't uh, at other times. Uh, the sessions have all been opened by, and in the rest of the series will be opened by, uh, mostly historians who've studied these movements, or, and because 1968 is only 50 years ago in this case, uh, it can be people who participated in those movements as well. Um, and uh, at each meeting there's a talk of about 30 minutes, uh, followed by uh, questions and discussion. They're not academic seminars in the usual sense. Uh, we encourage attendance and participation uh, by everyone. And in fact, when we get to the discussion, uh, what I'm going to do as chair is prioritise uh, people who perhaps haven't uh, spoken at meetings like this before or participated. So if you are such a person and you have a question in your mind, you know, don't sit there thinking, oh, my question's silly. Uh, ask it. And, uh, or if you have a point, make the point. Um, uh, we, we want to encourage uh, participation uh, by everybody here. Um, and we hope that one of the things we're hoping is that uh, these discussions will provoke us all to think about uh, what is uh, revolution? Uh, what do we mean when we use that word? Uh, and the organising group, again, um, is made up not, uh, it includes people who have worked or work in universities, but it, it's an organising group brought together uh, by people who are interested in ideas about changing the world and specifically communist ideas. That's how the series on uh, the Russian Revolution started. You can actually see all those uh, lectures on, online. Um, and uh, the fact you can see them online brings me to another point, which is that we'll record um, both uh, from that phone there, if it works, uh, and also a voice recording uh, but if you answer a question, right, I mean, that's pointed here, right? So if you ask a question, your face is not going to be uh, broadcast around the internet. I mean, if you, if you want to ask something you really don't want it recorded, just say so. Um, no, no problem. Um, and a couple of other uh, practical points. Um, there are loos just along there and in the corner. And uh, that's it. We're here in the community centre. Right. Uh, this session will be opened by Steve Cushion. He is a retired university lecturer, uh, lives in East London. He's branch secretary of the uh, retired members branch of, 
the London Retired Members Branch of the University and College Union, and he is also involved in the Socialist History Society, the Society for Caribbean Studies, and he's Secretary of Caribbean Labour Solidarity. Um, he's going to talk about workers in the Cuban Revolution. Um, whereas both supporters and opponents of the Cuban Revolution have often seen it as a victory of a small group of guerrillas, uh, Steve's argument, his research, has focused on the workers' movement and the role that it played uh, in that victory. So, Steve, over to you. Thank you. Uh, yes, well, it is, in fact, the very long 1960s because I finish in 1959. <laughs> but, uh, 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 but there you go. Uh, so, uh, on the 30th of December 1955, the train crews on the Ciego de Avila to Moron line were on strike in solidarity with the sugar workers. The army, with fixed bayonets, surrounded the workshop in Moron, and the officer said, either the engines go out or there'll be a bloodbath. That broke the strike. Uh, unarmed workers, whose trade unions are doing all they can to obstruct any generalisation of solidarity, can't fight such a threat using traditional trade union methods. But there were small groups of militants who emerged from this and other similar defeated strikes who looked for new methods of uh, uh, defending their interests. We have here an untold history of working class involvement in the Cuban insurrection of the 1950s. Uh, it comes from the, uh, emerge, this emerges from the archives. It's, to me, a fascinating history of courage and organisation. So, uh, recovering from the defeat of an important series of industrial battles, in 1955, a small group of workers managed to build a clandestine labour movement uh, in the face of an entrenched trade union bureaucracy and a brutal military dictatorship. Uh, this movement refused to accept the logic of capitalist industrial relations, which relates workers' demands to an employer's ability to pay. Uh, they organised unofficial strikes, they produced a lively underground press, and combined industrial action with sabotage and armed conflict. Uh, and, and in the process pro providing valuable support to the rebel uh, guerrillas. By the end of 1958, they were able to organise two revolutionary workers' congresses comprised of hundreds of delegates uh, and, and finally, the most complete general strike in Cuban history. Uh, now, there was a profound contradiction at the heart of the Cuban economy. The national income, principally derived from the export of sugar, uh, provided 80% of the country, which provided 80% of the country's e uh, export, was insufficient to maintain the wage rates and staffing levels historically expected by the workers, while at the same time uh, uh, providing profit margins that the employers demanded. In order to maintain their profits, uh, uh, business interests needed to uh, uh, increase productivity, which they sought to do by cutting wages, decreasing staffing levels, and introducing new machinery. Such a redivision of the national uh, uh, income in favour of capital at the expense of labour uh, <coughs> did not provide, uh, didn't prove possible under a democratic regime. Uh, and I would argue that this is what caused a significant sections, uh, sectors of Cuban and uh, United States business uh, to support the authoritarian solution offered by Fulgencio Batista, uh, who, who had a coup in 1952. Uh, uh, and they, this support was in the expectation that an authoritarian regime uh, could break workers' resistance to the implementation of these cost-cutting measures. Uh, the Batista government supported and coordinated an offensive by the main groups of employers uh, aimed at reducing wage costs, having first secured the support of the trade union leadership by corruptly advancing the personal interests of the bureaucracy. Uh, this productivity drive was conducted sector by sector uh, ensuring that no two significant group of workers came under attack at the same time, uh, thereby undermining the, uh, the possibility of uh, generalised resistance, uh, a bit like the Ridley plan of uh, the Thatcher years. Uh, this process was aided by the trade union bureaucracy, who played a moderating and conservative role. However, whenever there was a, a, a danger uh, of groups of workers bypassing the limits set by, by the bureaucracy, the government then used repressive force to defeat them. This dual strategy of repression and corruption, which was employed throughout 1955, succeeded in defeating workers in the railway, banking, textiles and brewing industries, as well as, most importantly, the sugar workers. 
uh, despite a series of bitterly fought uh, strikes. The tobacco workers and dockers managed to resist the increased uh, mechanisation of their industries, and this had some, some interesting political uh, outcomes uh, later. Uh, as a result of the defeats of 1955, important sections uh, uh, of the Cuban working class uh, sought other methods of organisation and struggled to defend their, uh, their interests. Uh, now, Cuba has the highest per percentage of, union, of trade unionised workers in Latin America, but the bureaucracy of the trade union confederation, the Confederación de Trabajadores de Cuba, the CTC, uh, uh, which was headed by uh, General Secretary Eusebio Mujal, uh, uh, which was why the, uh, the bureaucracy were known as the Mujalistas, uh, it's still, a, uh, still spoken in Cuba a bit like the French use the word collabo. Uh, uh, was completely, he was completely corrupt uh, and in 1948 had managed to defeat the communists uh, and gain control of the trade union machinery through a mixture of uh, gangster violence and government patronage. Up to 1955, the CTC bureaucracy had appeared to defend wages and conditions and had largely maintained its hegemonic position. Uh, however, in the face of, of, of the concerted employers' offensive, which really started in earnest in 1955, it revealed itself as unwilling or unable to safeguard working class living standards. It was increasingly seen as part of the problem uh, rather than part of the solution. Uh, there, were, uh, uh, now, there were two, however, two successful general strikes against the Batista regime. In August 1957 and uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in January 1959, which are normally considered uh, spontaneous. Uh, this is an example, I would argue, of the tendency of historians to see an event as spontaneous, when in reality they just don't actually know who organised it. Uh, the whole idea, uh, this use of the idea of spontaneity to dismiss events uh, uh, for, which a, for which an author has no explanation uh, uh, ignores and dismisses grassroots uh, organisation. Uh, these two strikes, as well as a large amount of other militant working class activity, were the work of a network of activists uh, linked to the rebel movement. Uh, this organisation, which, which was started by revolutionary militants from Guantanamo, uh, drew on pre-existing unofficial relationships within the labour movement and spread westwards to cover much of the island. As well as organising strikes and demonstrations, these act activists engaged in sabotage uh, and provided logistical support uh, for the guerrillas. Uh, this network was organised in some areas on the basis of a formal cell structure, in other areas less formally. So, uh, these activists sometimes collaborated with Communist Party members and supporters uh, according to local circumstances, traditions, personal relationships, etc. Sometimes this network operated under the name of the uh, Frente Obrero Nacional, the National Workers' Front, sometimes with the name of, uh, under the name of a local committee of workers' unity or some such. Sometimes it was just completely ano uh, uh, anonymous. Uh, but whatever form this network took in the localities, it proved very effective uh, in organising material and political support for the rebels in the hills, as well as localised industrial action. Uh, uh, but uh, the most significant achievement uh, that these uh, activists produced was, was that they provided the basis for Fidel Castro to call the most complete general strike in Cuban history in 1959. Uh, now, it can be confusing to refer to the labour movement as if it, were, if, as if it was uh, a single entity. Uh, uh, there were clearly a variety of different movements operating within the working class in Cuba during the period uh, in question. Uh, it might be therefore helpful to refer to poles of political attraction uh, within the wider context of organised labour. Uh, there were three such poles of attraction within the broader labour movement. The communists, known as the Partido Socialista Popular, the uh, Popular Socialist Party, or PSP, the Movimento Revolucionario Betis de Julio, the uh, July the 26th movement, which was led by Fidel Castro, and the trade union bureaucracy, uh, led by uh, uh, Eusebio Mujal. Uh, but I would argue that from 1955 onwards, the main question in working class political life was the competition for support between the, PS between the, PSP, the Communist PSP and the uh, uh, July the 26th uh, uh, and the July the 26th movement. Uh, uh, as, because the, the Mujalista trade union bureaucracy started to lose credibility after the defeats of 1955 and became increasingly dependent on state intervention to maintain its position. 
There were some splits in the uh, union leadership which took two forms. On the one hand, internal jealousies and arguments over the division of the spoils of corruption. Uh, uh, and on the other, some honest officials uh, who opposed what they saw as the sellout of the workers' interests. The latter group was small in number, but quite significant in their effectiveness. And they moved towards the July 26th movement. Uh, so I would argue that by, by, the, by, the, middle, by the middle of 1958, Mulhall and his associates uh, were well, uh, effectively marginalised. The Communist Party found its main support in those industries which were able, for various reasons, to resist the employer's offensive of 1955 uh, and defend their conditions of employment, which is principally the docks, uh, the tobacco industry and hotel and catering. Uh, in those industries, the communist line of mass struggle still appeared to provide a way forward. Uh, however, in those industrial sectors, sectors which had suffered defeat in the class battles of, uh, of uh, 1955, particularly railways, banking, textiles and sugar, a uh, small but growing nuclei of local workers' leaders uh, turned to a more, uh, a more radical policy. They became convinced that the only way that workers could reclaim their rights and regain democratic control over their trade unions was by the revolutionary overthrow of the regime. These militant workers were attracted to the armed struggle approach uh, of the July 26th movement. Of particular importance were a group of railway workers uh, from Guantanamo in the extreme east of the island uh, who developed a, a, a tactical approach they called Movimiento Obrero del Gerente, uh, probably translated as uh, uh, trade unionism on a war footing, uh, which combined industrial action such as strikes, go slows, and demonstration uh, with sabotage, bombing, and uh, 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 other arm, uh, uh, armed actions. Uh, thus, uh, when uh, 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 telephone, telephone engineers went on strike, they cut the cables before they went. Uh, train drivers derailed train, uh, scab trains driven by managers. Uh, and so on. Uh, uh, and this dovetailed quite well with the July the 26th movement's uh, approach, uh, which relied on a general strike supported by criminal <coughs> action to overthrow the uh, dictatorship. Uh, but I will say that the fact that these workers adopted revolutionary tactics didn't actually affect their basic demands, which were reformist, uh, in the sense they sought improvements within capitalism. Rather than, uh, uh, rather than its overthrow. Uh, the growth of the, uh, uh, the, growth of the uh, July the 26th movement, uh, Section Obrera, or, or its, its workers' section, uh, inevitably brought them into contact with Communist Party ministers at the workplace level. And the dynamics of workplace organisation forced these groups of militants to interact. And while there was continued political de dissipate, uh, debate and disagreement, a process of convergence started to occur, which uh, was considerably advance, in advance of the developing uh, 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 a relationship at leadership level. Because the two, the two, the two, the two organisations had much in common politically. They both advocated an egalitarian nationalist solution to the social and economic crisis. Uh, uh, they assumed the necessity for a cross-class alliance uh, and saw the revolutionary process as one that progressed by stages. Uh, neither grouping openly advocated socialism. The differences were largely tactical, with the PSP promoting unarmed mass struggle, uh, while the July the 26th saw the need for armed action to defeat the forces of state repression. Uh, uh, both organisations placed the general strike at the centre of their, their approach, but they had a very different conception uh, of, of, of what they actually meant by the general strike. To the PSP, uh, it represented a traditional stoppage of work, by the overwhelming majority of workers, which would thereby achieve their objective by sheer weight of numbers, paralysing the economy. To the July the 26th movement, the general strike was more akin to a mass armed popular insurrection. Uh, as opposition to the Batista regime grew, the difference between these two tactical approaches uh, was tested uh, in practice. Uh, the PSP leadership learned the need for armed support, while the July the 26th leadership realised that popular support couldn't just be summoned, but had to be built by relating to workers' economic and social uh, interests. Uh, the process of tactical convergence began first at workplace level. Uh, local solidarity pushed militants from both organisations uh, to work together. Uh, uh, and this convergence was boosted by the increasing brutality uh, 
uh, of the regime, particularly uh, at the eastern end of the island. As the army and police became frustrated by their inability to defeat the guerrillas in the hills, they vented their feelings uh, uh, on the uh, civilian population. Uh, in addition to this random, unofficial violence, there was increased activity by, by government death squads, which targeted all sections of the opposition, but made a particular target for known working-class activists, including, uh, including uh, uh, communists. The sheer horror of the state violence meted out by the uh, uh, Batista dictatorship has dropped from sight uh, uh, in recent studies. But it needs to be remembered uh, uh, as an important factor contributing to the increased popular hatred uh, of the regime. Uh, it was quite a common tactic. They would arrest, the, the police would arrest a, a shop steward from a, 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 a sugar plantation, take them to, uh, a, 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 and they would next be found hanging from a tree outside of town. Uh, and uh, uh, when, when inquiries were made, they said, oh no, we released him, but he seemed depressed, he must have hanged himself. Uh, and this, this is the sort of level of the, uh, of, 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 of the, uh, the state depression. Uh, so the common danger this common, uh, was another factor that pushed rank and file communists and fidelistas together, uh, uh, as, as well as producing uh, a feeling amongst ordinary uh, PSP members that they needed to arm themselves, if only in self-defence. Uh, there was a political convergence between the two organisations. The process of organisational uh, convergence was much slower, in part due to anti-communist attitudes within sections of the July 26 movement, particularly in Havana. However, anti-communism takes different forms, and there are both right-wing and left-wing varieties. Uh, 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 right-wing anti-communists are opposed to communists because of their, of their opposition to the collectivisation of property. Uh, left-wing anti-communists feel that, frequently feel that communists are insufficiently militant and overly bureaucratic with a poor commitment to democracy. So it's important to differentiate between these two phenomena, as the left-wing critics, critics of the Communist Party uh, were prepared to collaborate with communist militants once these adopted a more radical approach, while the right-wing were generally resolutely opposed in all circumstances. Uh, the leading members of the July the 26th movement uh, uh, workers' section fell into the left-wing category, uh, and uh, following the, the uh, Communist Party's acceptance of the armed struggle, were happy to work with, uh, happy to work with communists. Right, so a view of the Cuban Revolution which sees the rebel victories entirely the work of the uh, uh, guerrilla army will necessarily see little, com little contribution from the communists. But if the role of organised labour is taken into account, the communist, con the communist contribution becomes considerably more significant. Uh, as this is the area where they operate most effectively. Thus, their significant uh, systematic agitation and propaganda was a key factor in helping to maintain independent working class organisation, while their organisational experience and pre-existing militant networks complemented the July uh, uh, the 26th uh, uh, workers' section. So, right, in all this, of course, there was a regional dimension, and opposition to the regime was generally stronger in the east of the island, at least pronounced uh, in Havana. Uh, the, arrival of the, uh, uh, of the, the arrival of the nucleus of the rebel army uh, in Granma uh, gave, gave the advocates of uh, Movimiento Obrero Villacarente their first test. There were strikes and sabotage in Guantanamo in solidarity with the armed, uh, armed uprising that took place uh, 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 in Santiago uh, in November uh, uh, 1956. Uh, this drew the attention of the leadership of the July the 26th movement to the contribution that could be made by organised labour, uh, and the Guantanamo workers were encouraged to spread their organisation and activities. Relationship between the July the 26th uh, and the uh, PSP were also much better in the east of the island. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's... The further away you get from the Central Committee, the more people actually uh, uh, start to uh, 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 start to take practical decisions rather than, uh, uh, than, than sort of follow the party line. Uh, now, it is, to me, it's quite interesting that in Santiago, when this armed uprising happened, uh, uh, November the thirtieth, uh, nineteen fifty-seven, the leadership in Havana of the uh, 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 of the Communist Party knew this was happening, thought it was mad and forbade their people in Havana to have anything to do with it. 
Uh, one Tucker Chell, who was the leader of uh, the Communist, member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, leader of the, San, of the Santiago Dockers, took not a blind bit of notice of this and pulled the Dockers out in strike in support of the armed uprising. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, that kind of is a very concrete uh, analysis of, of what was going on. Uh, there was there was a, uh, a if you know Santiago de Cuba, there is on the once uh, on the one side of the road there is the dock. On the other side of the road there is the uh, uh, the Bacardi the Bacardi rum fa uh, rum distillery, uh, and the uh, uh, the mainly Afro-Cuban dockers were led by the Communist Party. The mainly white uh, 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 distillery workers were led by the July the 26th movement, but uh, 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 the two the, the two senior stewards in places were friends, uh, and when one lot came out, the other walked out. And uh, if it was uh, if it was a dispute over uh, if, uh, from a dispute over wages to in the end to a, uh, to an armed insurrection, and I think this uh, uh, this local. Uh, this local, act, this local activity is an important uh, 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 factor uh, that we have here. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, import, uh, and, uh, the, uh, uh, the importance and influence of working class members of the July 26th movement was much greater in the eastern uh, provi uh, provinces, uh, whereas the uh, urban underground in Havana tended to be uh, drawn more from professional petty bourgeois backgrounds. Uh, and uh, 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 I think that this this workplace solidarity uh, and this uh, this working class the, the greater working class elements in the leadership of the giant 26 movement uh, is quite uh, quite significant here. Uh, and of course, the trade union bureaucracy was weaker in the east because the corrupt bureaucrats. Uh, much preferred staying in Havana where they were comfortable than rather than actually having to go out and do anything, particularly uh, uh, in the rural sugar, uh, in the sugar areas. Uh, and another factor, of course, was that government expenditure, uh, capital expenditure was concentrated in Havana, uh, which provided employment, the tourist industry, the hotel building programme, uh, and so on. So there was actually less economic pressure uh, on workers in Havana as well. Uh, and so as the crisis deepened, uh, the army and police engaged in a campaign of terror, as I've said, using death squads and torture. Uh, and this was particularly fierce in, uh, uh, in Oriente province uh, in the east. Uh, uh, militant workers, even when unconnected with the rebels, were particularly targets of uh, uh, this state of repression. The initial working class response to the terror uh, was a series of strikes in Manzanillo, Bayamo and Santiago. These helping to raise the level uh, of opposition to the regime, proved pretty ineffective in preventing government violence. Uh, and, uh, uh, and thus, uh, uh, many sectors of workers, including uh, the local communist parties, were drawn to support for the rebel forces. Uh, uh, so even the August 1957 strike, uh, uh, despite being the biggest demonstration against Batista before he fled, didn't seriously uh, uh, threaten the regime. Uh, and in circumstances where a regime is prepared to use high levels of brutality to suppress workers' attempts to defend their wages and conditions, then conventional methods of mass action, strikes, demonstrations, etc., uh, are frankly insufficient. Uh, but, I would, but equally, I would argue that armed uh, uh, guerrilla action without mass support uh, leads to isolation and defeat. So the victory of the revolutionary forces in Cuba in 1959, I would argue, was due to a successful combination uh, of these tactics. Uh, the failure of the government's summer offensive uh, in 1958 gave the rebel forces immense prestige and resulted in the loss of support for Batista from within the business class. Uh, they, uh, uh, they were prepared to support him uh, 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 while they thought he could defeat, uh, 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 while he could defeat their interests, but when of course he proved unable to, to do so, they, uh, 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 their, their support kind of melted away. Uh, and uh, 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 so, anyway, the, sub the, the rebel advances following uh, the, uh, the defeat of the uh, regime summer offensive uh, uh, was uh, uh, led Batista to flee the country. So this removed the dictator, but it didn't actually ensure the uh, victory of the revolutionary forces. Uh, the general strike called by Fidel Castro at the beginning of January 1959 was crucial in preventing uh, an army coup uh, that could have prolonged the war. Uh, 
Um, and I would argue that that, that successful strike was in no way spontaneous, but was the result of uh, careful uh, preparation. Uh, the, uh, uh, the July the 26 movement uh, uh, workers' section and uh, uh, the workers' front organisation of the Communist Party had joined to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, join together to call to the United Workers' National Front. And that, that was responsible for convening two well-attended workers' con congresses in rebel-held uh, uh, territory uh, uh, in 19, uh, uh, 1958. Uh, the one in Matanzas, uh, uh, in the area controlled by uh, uh, the rebel forces of Camilo Cienfuegos. Uh, 800, uh, 800 shop stewards met to plan for a strike in the next, uh, 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 to take place uh, at the start of the next sugar harvest. Uh, uh, now, 800 shop stewards got together under a military dictatorship. I mean, we are pressed to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so on. So I think you know, this, 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 this does sort of indicate the level of, uh, of the organisation. So these two congresses agreed to organise a general strike at the start of the next sugar harvest which was due to begin, in, begin the following January. However, Batista fled before this, and the general strike had to be brought forward to prevent this military coup. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I would argue that the importance of that general strike can't be underestimated. Uh, so, in common with many conflict situations, there were a number of struggles taking place in parallel, uh, and most combatants participated in some elements, but not others, according to their beliefs uh, and their class interests. Uh, so the insurrection, I would argue, was a civil war, a class struggle, an anti-imperialist movement, a democratic revolution, a fight for national independence against neocolonialism, a campaign against corruption, and an element of the Cold War. Uh, and uh, uh, very few people were doing all of those things, if you see what I mean. But that, that, that those elements can be seen in the uh, 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 the forces that. Uh, 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 yeah. But equally, between nineteen. Uh, uh, 1952 and, and the end of 1958, there was no, I've, I've found no evidence of anyone arguing for socialism. Uh, now, uh, for, I've interviewed people who were involved, who say, oh, that's what we meant. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, there is no, uh, there's no actual, uh, 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 I've found no mention of, of, of the word in, uh, in any of the propaganda. Uh, and, uh, uh, the workers who supported the rebel cause, I would suggest, it's on a number of levels. They did so as general citizens, partly the general revulsion of corruption and a desire for return for, for democracy. Uh, and in working class politics, this was reflected in the demand for cleansing the, uh, the trade unions and uh, the right to elect their own leaders. Uh, uh, and this wasn't a, uh, an abstract demand, but linked to re-establishing the, uh, 